We've got a battery outside the box, a very polarizing what should your second HF radio be? Is Ham Radio Deluxe worth the money? And why is nobody doing JSA at call for Parks on the Air? Coming up this time on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike K at MRD. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email, k at MRD at iCloud.com. Let's dive right in. We got, I think this guy's trying to play tricks with us. He's got a battery box outside the box. He says, Mike, you inspired me to make a battery outside the box, LOL. This runs my mobile in the truck. Your channel is so entertaining and informative. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, I just wanted to thank you. Still haven't been able to work your station, but I'm not giving up to get you in the log. If you're ever wondering when you're staring in the camera, does anyone care? The answer is yes. Keep up the great work. Your friend, the happy ham. And this is what he sent me. This, this guy's just too creative. Look at this. A battery outside the box. He built himself a battery box just by buying a PO4 power battery from Gigaparts, which I actually do have a 5% off discount code. I'll leave it a link for it. Uh, and uh, congratulations. You managed to successfully put two red wires on your battery. <laughs> Never mind red and black. And then you taped over uh, which one is positive and negative, so you'll never know it. Is that, is that black duct, ta duct tape? Is that Gorilla tape? Is that gaffer's tape? <laughs> That's great. Definitely scent and fun. I, I got a kick out of that. So thanks for writing it. I think that was from Big John. Big John. I wonder if that's the same Big John that's always late to these videos. Next, we've got a question that's going to have multiple answers. None of them are right. None of them are wrong. But hopefully I can kind of guide you in the right direction. This viewer is saying, uh, what should my second HF radio be? Currently running the Yaesu 991A base station, and while I like it, it does have its limitations. I toyed back and forth with that in the ICOM 7300 and decided on the 991A. What's the next progression up from the 991, 991A, thanks so much, 73? Uh, I followed up with an email, He uh, or he followed up with an email and said, instead of wasting your time in the obligatory, it depends, I'll share, share some brief background. I'm the preparedness-minded guy who got into ham radio for its prepping advantages. I have a feeling you might relate. Yes, I got into ham radio exactly the same reason. I'm exploring digital modes and hope to learn CW after I upgrade to extra thanks in advance. Now, uh, you don't need to upgrade to extra to learn CW, but... Uh, Studying extra and learning CW at the same time might be a big, a big of a challenge. So uh, I've put quite a bit of thought into this. And being that you want to do digital modes and CW as a prepper or prepared-minded person, for me, I would want something as small and portable and lightweight as possible. I would ideally want an internal battery. Uh, a good internal tuner would be nice, although not necessary. Uh, and and my mindset is coming from like bugging out. If you gotta if you gotta bug out, you gotta you gotta go. You gotta leave where you are. You gotta bring whatever you can: food, water, clothes, comms, all that kind of stuff. Well, you're not bringing a 991 with you. So, you know. Do you want all band, all mode? For me, that's not particularly important. I always have an HT with me, so that would kind of cover my VHF, UHF. And since we're talking about HF, digital, and CW, I don't think all mode and uh, all band is, is that uh, important. Also, uh, do you want something that has an internal sound card so you can just plug a USB into it? Or is having something like a DigiRig uh, feasible for you? So I want to throw out a couple names uh, to to kind of look down, so radios that have a tuner, uh, a good tuner anyway, uh, Elecraft KX2 or KX3, fantastic, uh, and the others are Zygus. You got the Zygu X5105, you've got the Zygu G90, and you've got the Zygu 6100. Uh, radios that don't have a tuner, the ICOM 705, the Yaesu 818 or 817, the Lab 599, or the new uh, FX4CR. Not one of these radios is going to do everything that I would want it to do. Now, the radio that I most commonly take out is the ICOM 705. It's got an internal battery. It's HF, VHF, UHF, 
all band, all mode. Uh, it's pretty lightweight. It's it's a shack in the box. It doesn't have a tuner. And, and the reason I say you might want a tuner, I 99.9% .9 of the time am using a resonant antenna. But in that SHTF kind of situation, maybe your antenna breaks, maybe you leave it behind, maybe you need to just make something, okay? Having a good tuner is a pretty nice thing. When I was in uh, Washington with the We4DX uh, Ham Radio Adventures Club, we had a contest to make an antenna out of the most random object. And me and my partner actually tuned up a guy wire for a phone pole. We got it to about three to one and we're able to make some whisper contacts. We were doing a whisper competition. But even a little tuner like this, this is the uh, ATU-10. This is a pretty darn good tuner and something that might, uh, you, you might be able to makeshift something with this uh, to if you have to make an antenna. The Zygu radios like this X5105 have tremendous uh, internal antenna tuners. So that might be something to think, of, think about. Not a necessity, but something to think about. Now for digital, you want to think, okay, do I want a radio that's going to be very easy to set up for digital? Uh, meaning it has an internal sound card like the ICOM 705 or the Zygu 6100 has an internal sound card. You just plug the USB in, plug it into your computer, and away you go. Or, um, you know, something like the Yaesu 818 doesn't have an internal tuner, doesn't have an internal sound card. Uh, it does have an internal battery, which actually sucks, so you'll want to get an aftermarket lithium battery like this Windcamp that I have in here. But it's very easy to get on digital. Again, with the DigiRig. I mean, look at how small this thing is. There's, there's your setup right there. And all of that fits into this tiny little bag. I can put the 818 in here. I got the DigiRig. I've got coax. I put this tuner in there. I've got a CW key. I've got my soda beams, carbon six mast. There's a uh, uh, K6ARK uh, nine to one random wire antenna in here. Like everything I need is in there. So you really need to think what are your particular expectations? What do you want to get out of the radio? Power isn't a big deal. Uh, the, the 705 will do 10 watts with an external battery. All these others are like five watts. There is the G90 behind me. I actually built, uh, built that into a go box, which is also a solar generator. And I can just grab that box. I didn't put any holes in it. So it's watertight. Uh, I can charge my cell phone cause I got USB. I've got battery monitors in there. I've got a, a solar charge controller so I can recharge it with a solar panel out in the field, 20 Watts internal tuner amazing radio um but then you need to think you know filters there's no there's no notch filter there's no noise reduction on that radio so there's a lot of things to think about and i know you don't want an it depends answer <laughs> but it literally depends so uh take those radios that i that i listed off and make a list what are your expectations not one of these is gonna fit all of your needs there's gonna be a compromise so for me, in that scenario, with this question, I would say the 705 and an external tuner. That's my answer. But you do you. Next, we've got a question about logging software. This viewer is writing, is something like Ham Radio Deluxe worth the money? And how do you feel about these pay-to-play logging programs, too? This can be a very costly hobby, and it pays to see if you can stretch a dollar and only cry once and not over and over again. <sighs> That's a loaded question. Uh, I, I don't use Ham Radio Deluxe. I, I use a Mac. Uh, I have seen it in action. I have interviewed the owners of the company. Uh, I know Josh from Ham Radio Crash Course uses Ham Radio Deluxe and he's very happy with it. There are free logging softwares out there though. And I'll tell you, uh, there is something to go for, there is something to say for Although I'm not generally a fan, I get it uh, for the pay to play kind of subscription based uh, programs like that. Ham Radio Deluxe, I think is maybe a hundred bucks a year. I'm not sure, um, which seems steep. We're hams, we're cheap. 
<laughs> we spend all our money on radios and we don't want to spend a dime on anything else. I get it. But there's something to say for that. I originally started uh, logging with HF with a program called Aether that came with a free version. You could only uh, save 30 contacts per log with the free version. The paid version was $35, and, and after, I don't know, X amount of time, I ended up upgrading to that $35 version. There is zero support for that software, though. I, I, I emailed the guy several times, never, ever got a response back. I finally left a one-star review in the uh, App Store uh, and just telling people, like, the logging software works, but if you ever need help or have questions, there is zero customer support. So there's something to say about Ham Radio Deluxe or uh, software of that ilk. You pay for what you get. If you have questions or concerns or problems or issues arise, you have customer support. I know for a fact they're always working to make their software better via software updates, where with Aether, that didn't really happen. It was just, that's it. That's what you get. And it was only 35 bucks, but still, I paid for it. Now I use a program called Rumlog NG, which is a free program. I am absolutely over the moon in love with that program, so much so uh, there is a donation page uh, on his website. I donated him $50 because I'm so much in love with his software and I just wanted to uh, pay him for that because he did it so selflessly. Uh, it's not without its quirks, though. The, the instructions, while there are instructions, there are also gaps in the instructions. They're not very intuitive. There's things that could definitely be done, like how to uh, hook up WSJTX to Rumlog NG and, and just in, in better detail. Some of us want pictures, you know? You talk about something, but where the heck is it, you know? So I think that could be improved upon. So, you know, customer service, software updates, those kinds of things. Um, and it is very, very packed with features. So um, <sighs> would it be for me as a subscription? Probably not. Uh, but other people find a lot of value in that. So I'm very happy with Rumlog NG. Ham Radio Deluxe is working on a Mac version. They've been teasing me for uh, close to two years now. It'll be two years in February. Uh, they offered me a product key when it comes out, so I will review it at some point. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's going to be a hard, uh, a hard sell for me to, to beat Rumlog NG for what it does for me on a Mac. Um, and the price of entry is free. So uh, same thing can go with editing software. I edit with DaVinci Resolve. It's a free program uh, because the software isn't actually their main business model. They sell really expensive movie cameras. Uh, but the software itself, if I want to buy it, which I'm getting very close to buying it, is only $300 and it's a one-time fee. And they always, they're always doing updates. Uh, so it's great. But... <sighs> Generally, I'm not a big fan of the pay-to-play kind of stuff, so how's that for an answer? Lastly, we've got a question about POTA and digital modes. This viewer is writing, I'm new to digital modes or will be once Santa brings a digi-rig. I'm new to POTA as well. Why is it that nobody talks about or seems to use JS8 call for POTA activations or hunting? Like many people, I suspect that FT8 won't have the same excitement for me as SSB voice. JS8 Call seems to have a different or more participant feel that I think would be more fun for POTA than FT8. That said, I think I must be missing something because I have not seen JS8 Call and POTA spoken of together except for self-spotting over RF. Please share your infinite <laughs> immature wisdom. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a tall order there, buddy. Uh, with me and your Ham Radio 2 viewers, if answering this question is your will. Well, it is my will. JS8 Call is something that I think had the best intentions when it was uh, uh, made, but it's been pretty much abandoned by the developer since 2020. And it it started off as some... When FT8 first came out, a lot of people were like, wow, this is great, but wouldn't it be cool if we could actually have a keyboard-to-keyboard -keyboard conversation? So the guy that developed JS8 Call built it off of this, the architecture of FT8. And it kind of had a bit of buzz when it first came out and kind of fizzled out. For me, particularly, 
uh, I did a video on it when it first came out. I thought it was really cool. But then as I dove in, I was like, well, this is really convoluted and, and the instructions the manual is still unfinished. Like there's sections in it that are like uh, need to do. You know, he's got to do sections to, to fill in certain portions of it. It's not intuitive. You, you need to kind of already know how to use it to know how to use it. And uh, it's, it's just not it's not very active. You don't hear a lot of people on it. But here it is. I had to actually learn something today just to like how to log. So there's nothing wrong with JS8 call. Uh, I just went on and called CQ. I had uh, W6EZE come back to me. He said, what's my signal report? I sent it to him. He said, hey, big fan. How's it going? I said, doing well. Thanks. Trying to figure out logging. How the heck do you log with this stuff? And uh, didn't hear anything for another eight minutes. <laughs> 2220 to 2228. Finally said good luck. And I said I figured it out. So uh, you just kind of click on this. This is who I was working. You click on him and you hit this log button and it populates the field, but you'd still need to, if you want to put in the signal report, uh, it doesn't always do that. So you'll probably have to manually enter these fields for whatever pertinent information you want. And then you just click add log and it saves that as a log. Parks on the Air doesn't really care about signal reports, so it's not that important. The question is like, well, what constitutes as a contact? I actually was about to give up. I just left the program open, uh, and after eight minutes, he finally came back. But I was like, well, I guess that's the contact. I got his call, he got mine, and we exchanged information, so there you go. So after I hit add log, uh, it saved it, and you can actually go to log, open log directory here. And uh, there's the JS8 call uh, underscore log dot ADI. And if you open that up, here it is. I mean, this has got the date, time, call sign. I gave, sent his signal report. I didn't ask for mine. And there's the, the frequency and the mode. So that's really all you need. But the, the, the reality of it is, is that there's just not a lot of people on here. Not to say don't let that dissuade you. Heck, go out there, get on JSA call. Even if you only make one contact, well, you only need nine more. So get on phone or FT8 or CW or whatever the heck smoke signals you want to you wanna do to, for your activation and make it happen. So, uh, yeah, the sad reality is it's just not that popular of a mode, unfortunately. So... Uh, that's my answer, but thanks for writing in. And guys, if you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email, k at mrd at icloud.com, and you may just have one of your questions featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Until next time, my name is Mike K at MRD, and we'll see you again on another episode of Ham Radio Tube. See ya!